Um, my name is Ken Murphy. I'm uh, the Associate Provost of uh, Chapman University. And I'll tell you a little bit about Chapman in a minute. My colleague here is Lori Mantooth. And uh, I'll let Lori say a few words about herself if she wants to. But she's a project manager, uh, director of, what's your exact title? I'm the director of enterprise uh, systems in IST. So we have one business side person, or that's how I view it, and one um, one technology person here. We're, uh, uh, my background, by the way, is I'm a business school professor, and my long-term experience is uh, 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 I'm a stat, stat teacher, uh, um, and operations management teacher, and now business analytics teacher, and I currently teach in our MBA program at Chapman. Um, this is uh, some background on Chapman University. We're in Orange County, California. Um, we're not a small school anymore. We're a pretty, pretty medium-sized school, I would say. Um, we, we're uh, rapidly reaching capacity. In fact, we have a second campus now, a, med uh, a health sciences campus, uh, 10 colleges. Uh, one of the jobs I'm in charge of space, for example, uh, for the university, so allocating classrooms and things like that is one of my I also sign all the part-time faculty contracts. So these are all jobs we have, you know, of course, many, many adjuncts as well as uh, full-on faculty. Our goal is we're uh, very highly ranked in um, U.S. News and World Report um, regionally, but our goal is to become nationally uh, uh, ranked in the next uh, 20 or so years. And as, I, as you can see up there, we're adding engineering school. That, that's our sort of traditional b picture right there. Over there you see... Um, uh, our new science building that's just coming online, and we just got a massive grant from the Keck Foundation. There's a picture later on. Um, they're supporting it, and it's the Keck Science Center. And then there is our brand new uh, Musco Center for Performing Arts. It's a world-class performing arts center. So we have a, we have a beautiful facility. Um, we're very lucky we're not, um, for some reason, we're not feeling some of the competitive pressures that a lot of universities are seeing. We have more applications every year, and well, we're finally going to start to level off our undergraduates, so we're, we're in good position in a bunch of ways. So it's real, real exciting, real exciting place to be, real exciting time to be at Chapman. Um, I'm going to let uh, Lori talk a little bit about the project and, um, and our, our project around implementing um, uh, Blackboard Analytics and, and uh, Pyramid Reporting System. And by the way, I forgot to introduce one other member of our team, very important. She probably doesn't want to be introduced, but Rosie App Fryman, right back there is um, she's our technical guru, basically, on our project. So, Lori, why don't you um, take the next couple slides. So, he's our provost, associate provost. He's the extrovert. I am the ISMT introvert, scared out of my mind right now, so. Um, but as, as Ken said, I have only been with Chapman for a little, oh, little over three years, and I was hired to finish the PeopleSoft implementation of Campus Solutions. HR and finance had just been implemented. They were in the middle of Campus Solutions. And I was telling Ken earlier, it was over budget and behind schedule. Can you fix it? And I said, yeah, yeah, I can fix it. So that's, that's how I got introduced to Chapman. Um, we went live with PeopleSoft in 2015. It was not received well. We had been on DataTel for over 10 years. And it was not received well. No one liked PeopleSoft. And as in many projects that are overdue and behind budget, a lot of scope had to get cut. And the majority of what got cut was reports. So here we go live with Campus Solutions to our new to a new system to our faculty members. And we have no reports, none at all, none. Like not even a course roster. So my CIO and myself said, we need to do something very, very quickly. And for those of you that don't know, PeopleSoft and Query, and, and nothing is really ever quick, and it's certainly not as quick as you need. So we quickly knew that we had to do a reporting strategy. We started this, again, it says November 2015, but we were still implementing PeopleSoft, and we knew that there was an issue, and we were, we were it was a crazy year. So we did an extensive RFP and an extensive evaluation, and I, I must say, my boss, the CIO, did an incredible job of getting buy-in from all over the university. We had deans going out to Pepperdine to check out Blackboard Analytics. Show me, show me how it works. And we went to, we had, I would say we had a representative from most of our um, departments 
we had um, someone from the registrar's office, someone from admissions, we had a couple of deans, uh, finance folks, HR folks, and she, I, I want to say 30, 35 of us, drove up to Pepperdine, well you guys know how far that is, but we drove up the coast of California to check out a university, um, and, and we, you know, not just for uh, People from Anna, Texas but, wouldn't say it's very far, it was but for, far. for driving two hours in Los Angeles seems like far. a long way. It okay. was far. <laughs> um, we also had a lot of vendors try to send us to the OBIEE Oracle solution, and in doing due diligence, all we kept finding was Blackboard Analytics, they get it up in you know, record time compared to, so anyway, um, that's what took so long with the vendor selection. And, um, and something I think it was Deborah that said earlier about being a partner. I think, um, I think Blackboard has been, in my 20 years experience, um, the best partner that Chapman, well, that, that I've had trying to implement software. So I just got to put my plug in there. We did our system setup, we did training. Um, we had our first rollout, first storyboard rollout in March. And, and, and something else I just wanted to mention, we're gonna go through the team in a minute, but um, I think it was Deborah also that was talking about the team. So this started as an IT project. We have to get reports out there, we have to get reports out there. I, I'm not a salesman, I don't know faculty, I, I was scared to death. Ken, Ken Murphy. Um, was the face of our project. He did the training, he did focus groups, he got faculty and chairs and everybody in, what do you need, what do you need? And last year at this time, I came to this conference and I got so excited, we can do this and we can do this and I came back. And so we did these focus groups and our faculty and dean said, can you give me a class roster? And I was like, no, we can do so much more. Oh, I just need a class roster, I just need email addresses. So that's how bare bones they had it. They didn't even have a list of their students and their email addresses, again, because we just went live. So um, took us a while. We did go live in March 2017 with a Dean's dashboard. We've got some more statistics on the next screen, I think. Oh yeah, this is our project team. So oh, what's on the next slide after this? Oh yeah, those are, that's the current state. So you've met Ken and myself. Um, I have another uh, project manager in ISNT named John Rose is our all things, I don't know, system administrator, data architect, she's, she's our guru. Janice is also an ISNT and she helps out. This, this was just the implementation team. Um, we have Robert in institutional research, Nick is in the admission and registrar, Andy's in admission, St uh, Stephanie and Kristen are all in the office of the provost. So these folks are, um, most all of these folks had a full-time job and we uh, talked about implementing this new project and gave them a second full-time job because now they're gonna be the pyramid reporters. And so when we talk about a couple of things, when Ken talks about a couple of things later, we may not have um, been as forthcoming or did we know how much time that was going to, to be on them. So that's our... And by the way, we, I tried to get some pictures from somebody <laughs> in ISNT of our staff couldn't find any, so I got I put a pictures of our senior leaders. So you know, when I go back to Chapman, they'll pay for our trip. You know, and everything. All right, we won't go into who they are. It's not important. So, um, go ahead. Oh, so where are we now? Um, we do have the dean's dashboard. We have twelve production reports. Oh wait, go back. I missed our. Um, go back one more. So this is our logo. That's it. It's our logo. Instead of using. Um, um, Blackboard Analytics, we changed it to Panther Analytics. So we've branded it, we marketed it, we, we advertised and advertised and advertised. And that, you know, if you build it, they will come, maybe. So this is, this is a screenshot of um, our dashboard. It's mostly um, enrollment uh, reports, student information. Um, this one happens to be the, oh yeah, the overall enrollment enrollment by plan, we have enrollment trends. So we're continuing to work on rolling out the student data. Um, and admissions, we have an admissions funnel now which is relatively new. And then we also have our finance pillar and our HR pillar in progress. We're doing data validation with them right now. It's going less enthusiastically because there was already finance reports and there was already HR reports and why are we doing this? We already have these reports. So that's, that's a little bit of a struggle. Um, and because it's 
a little bit of a struggle. We have, and he was in one of the pictures, our Vice Chancellor of Enrollment, who is, like Ken, very excited to get this data, and what can I do with this data? So we have uh, Phil coming next week to help us with our slate. Slate is uh, where the kids apply for the school. And so we're going to be bringing all of the um, applicant data into our data warehouse, too. I just want to paint a clear picture, and maybe it's a cone of silence in this room, but uh, not everything goes totally smoothly here for a bunch of reasons. And, and really what we had hoped is that we have a little bit more time for some interactive, but we're going to throw out some questions that maybe we can talk about afterwards. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of, I have two sets of challenges. One set of challenges here is really around um, commitment of senior leadership and motivation of staff. And, and I think I should have made a better graphic, but if you think about it, we've got senior leaders who are sort of allocating the resources and paying for things, right, and saying, putting the staff on the projects. We have staff that are actually doing the work, like developing the reports and all these things. But they have, as Lori mentioned, day jobs, right? And then we have end users, right, who are like, in, in the case of the dean's dashboard, are deans and department chairs and program directors and people like that. You know, it, and they kind of know what they want, but not really, right? But they're just kind of waiting there for, and, and you know, they're, they are coming to training. They are, they, they are, you know, somewhat enthusiastic. But so we have these three groups of people. And, you know, I, at least I could help, I could use advice on how to sell uh, a better management structure potentially for this group to get this project rolling out faster. So th those are the kinds of things we're interested in. So for example, at the beginning, our senior leaders are pretty psyched about this. I think, in, you know, on the surface, they're, they're, they're interested and they're excited. And as Lori said, they were motivated. Um, do they understand what it really means? I'm not sure, right? And, and the admissions, chief admissions officer is a good example because at the beginning, He's so used to managing from one number. How many freshmen did we admit last year? And because the system at the beginning couldn't deliver that number that he's used to, he wasn't comfortable with it. Well, finally, we got that number on a screen, and now he believes in the system, right? But what he's also starting to realize is that he can get an update on that number every week, right? Because he's so used to just having one number. He doesn't, he, the, the dynamic nature of, of data just right over his head until now. So it took a long time to sort of sell him on that. Um, and, then, and then there's uh, their allocation of their staff to the project. While they'll say that their staff can work on the project, their staff have other jobs. And when the, when the rubber meets the road, they got to get their regular job done, right? Not the project job. So things get delayed, right? And then the last thing is, especially with our two new projects, our HR and our finance project, those staff don't really view uh, operations managers in the schools as their customers. You know, where institutional research, yeah, they got a lot of requests for data. They knew they had a lot of customers. They're happy to build the report so they don't have to keep answering the same, you know, what are the student emails of the students in this major? They don't have to keep answering that question over and over. These people, they never gave the operations managers any data in the past. They don't know why they're designing dashboards for these people to give them any data now, right? And thereby, you know, that's the last thing on their list to do. So it, it causes the project delays. On the other side, of course, you know, there's uh, user adoption issues. And, and to me, these are, are somewhat less problematic than, than the organizational issues of the project itself. Um, you know, we do our best, of course. Uh, but but uh, I think the um, you know as Lori said the the questions they the questions they ask and the questions that we think they want to know are different. One of my problems is I moved I was a assistant dean but I've never been a department chair so I don't know a lot of the tasks that the department chairs go through. So we do have we have had some focus groups and some experts but we we haven't sort of. You know, and I, and I like the idea of something I heard this morning about a life cycle. What we should probably do is have some kind of a life cycle in mind, and then what information do you need to get through that life cycle? That was one thing I took away from the, this morning's presentation. Um, there's also technology issues. It turns out, you know, and, and this is probably true in many organizations, that everybody uses different terminology to describe the same thing, right? And so there's a huge organizational learning around, let's just get all on the same terminology. And then, you know, you know, the other thing is, is for some people, it's difficult to just to get them to log into the system, right? They, they're used to, they were used to getting something via email. It was a spreadsheet. They knew how to open it, right? Now they have to log in. They have to set some parameters, 
right? I see Phil skeptical of that. How difficult is it to do a couple of drop downs? Not that difficult, but for some people, it seems to be. So these were our questions for you. We're going to finish up here in a second, in case you're wondering. Um, you know, one thing is, uh, how should we structure our project to ensure the com to commitment by the leaders and also by the resources that are working on there? So what can we do? Uh, you know, there's, there's sort of some obvious things, I think, around incentives, but I think w where we need to work harder is to sell the leaders, the, the, the senior managers who, who are in the business office or in the HR office at, 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 at allocating some of their precious resources times. Um, the other thing is, is um, you know, what levers do we have when we don't manage people directly to get them to use these systems successfully? So that's why I had that little technology acceptance model in the corner of that one slide, which is a famous uh, MIS model. If you, if you have a degree in MIS, you probably remember from your degree, uh, for getting people to accept and use technology. And the last thing is, and, and this is where I'm really kind of big on now, is, is how can we get this, the sort of the culture of analytics rolled out to the organization as a whole? I'm reading a, a book by Davenport, um, and I don't know if you guys have read Competing on Analytics. It's a, he just came out with a, a, a second issue of the book. He has a framework for how organizations evolve through analytics. And so if you're interested in sort of the, the managerial or evolutionary uh, aspect of it, this is his framework for it. Um, if you're in stage one, you don't even have a data architecture or an ERP system or the, the, the tools in place. I think we're beyond that at Chapman now. I'm proud, proud to say that. If you're in step two, you're, you're rolling it out, but functionally, you're, 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 not, you're not corporate wide yet. You don't have the top leader saying, this is what we're going to do. And I kind of feel like we're there. We're getting proof of concept. We're proving it works. We're building trust. We're winning with certain small groups. We've got some users who like the system, but we're not fully engaged. When you get to level three, that's when you have your senior leaders saying, we're going to manage using the information that comes out of this system. That's a huge step. Because once you get to step three, then you can really begin to you know, leverage the power you have of your data. So my big question is, how do we get, how do I get, how does Lori and I get, how do we get our team, how do we sell our project to our senior leaders so that we can move to the next step?